Hey, it's May 1st. That makes it Wednesday. Welcome to May. This is the Roger Williams Media Minute. And today I want to talk with you about web hosting. So web hosting is basically what you build your website on so that everybody in the world can come and see your website. It can be any type of computer that has an open access to the internet and can serve HTTP protocol. You can run a web server out of your home, however, I highly don't recommend that for a few reasons. First of all, it's an open connection to the internet. So there are multiple security holes that you've now opened up. And if you're doing private personal things on that computer, it can open that stuff up to getting access by the outside world. Uh, also, you do not have a whole lot of bandwidth to your home unless you've got Google Fiber uh, to the house you really don't have a very fast internet connection and so your website's gonna be delivered very slowly. And if you get any type of traffic, it's gonna shut it down. So you always wanna go and find a web hosting company that all that they do is build data centers, put servers in those data centers and keep those servers running so that when web traffic comes to your website, your site comes up. The bottom line at the end of the day is that a web host should deliver your website all the time and as quickly as possible. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. Now you have to decide how much you wanna spend for that. So on the very, very cheap end, you've got shared hosting. Okay, this is where you see people like GoDaddy and web.com and DreamHost selling web hosting for anywhere from three to like five to six dollars a month. Okay, it's very, very cheap. The reason it's so cheap is because they're sharing the hard drive on that one computer with thousands of other websites. That's how they're able to make it so cheap. So they buy one server for, let's say, a couple of hundred dollars, and then they host thousands of websites on there for $5 a piece each month. They're making tons of money on that. Now, the problem is, is that the performance is going to stink for your website on that server. Okay, A, your load times are going to be multiple seconds in length, and if you think that being under five seconds is fast enough, you're wrong. Your website needs to load in under a second anymore because everybody's got their mobile phones and the mobile phones not only have to download that web page, they have to do it over a cellular network, which can be a horrible mess. So you really need to make sure your website's loading very quickly. If it's a business and, and you wanna make money with this thing and you want it to be effective part of your marketing and advertising, okay? With a shared host, you're also gonna have limitations in terms of what type of code you can execute on there. Uh, they're gonna have it locked down so it's very secure and so that your one website can't go and just ruin it and crash the server and crash thousands of websites. They lock things down. You can't do a lot of different neat little tweak things with Rails or PHP uh, or MySQL. They'll have a basic version loaded on there so you can at least get WordPress going and things like that. But if you wanna dig into Apache at all, that's gonna be locked off, okay? The next step up from a shared host has a ton of different names now. You got virtual hosts, you've got uh, cloud servers, you've got Amazon Web Services. This is where now they're taking one box and they're creating an actual separate instance of the operating system for you to use. And it, in essence, is your own web server but you're still sharing that device. Now, what they've started to do is connecting all these hundreds of thousands of servers they've got together so that you're now sharing resources across devices. Um, it's, it's an interesting concept. It's a good step to go to if you don't have hundreds of hundreds of dollars, like 500 or more dollars a month to spend. That's when you get into the dedicated. We'll talk about that in a second. But with these virtual servers, you're gonna spend anywhere from like, let's say $40 all the way up to $120, $200. It varies based on who the host is and what kind of features and RAM and uh, processor speed and how much hard drive and how much bandwidth you need. But at this stage, you are gonna start getting much better performance. Now it can vary heavily depending on the provider because sometimes you are paying a company who is buying hosting from another company. Okay, and this happens with shared hosting too. Um, and so you wanna try and figure that out. It can be hard to figure out, but what you can usually deduce is that if you call their support and either they won't take phone calls, um, or if they do take phone calls, 
it, they then have to go and talk to somebody else to get it done, there's a good chance that they're not actually running the machine that you're paying for. So you wanna be aware of that. Lately, I've been using a company called Liquid Web. They're out of Michigan. They also have data centers here in Scottsdale, which is very close to me. And while proximity is not supposed to be important with the internet, I, I get superstitious with that stuff. I digress. I love Liquid Web. I can call them anytime. They answer my phone calls. There's no charge for that. They go to great lengths, very technically. They do a lot of stuff on Apache for me that I really, I don't understand this stuff. I mean, I, I have some ideas, but there's a limit to my knowledge because I'm trying to be focused on other things. But with Liquid Web, I know I can call them. They're basically my IT admin, uh, so I really like them. If you're looking for a web host, either go to them or make sure that you can call your web host anytime and they're responsive, they'll pick up the phone 24 hours a day. Uh, also make sure their email support's awesome, and if they have live chat, that's, that can be great too. With Liquid Web, for instance, I've got websites that when I test them on Pingdom are loading in under a second, some well under, like 200 milliseconds. Um, and so that's very fast, and that's what I need, that's what my clients need, and that's what the customers want. So make sure that they're loading very quickly, also make sure you have good support. The final level, the ultimate tier, is dedicated server. That's where uh, either uh, you are buying, you're renting somebody's whole server in their place, or you're doing a co-location where you're taking your hardware and you're putting it into somebody's facility. Uh, both of these are you know, multiple hundreds of dollars per month, if not even more. Um, and this is a situation where now, let's say you're doing e-commerce, Let's say, I mean, we're talking about things where not only is your website doing your marketing, but your website is your business. At this point, you need to be moving into a dedicated solution where either you know, you're renting somebody's hardware or you own the hardware that's going in there and you're working very, very closely with the provider at that point. However, all that they're providing you generally is power and bandwidth and obviously space. Uh, you are gonna do everything else. You are gonna be your own IT admin. You're gonna have to troubleshoot uh, everything uh, you know, that's, that's inside of the bandwidth connection and inside of the power connection. All of that is now yours to run, so make sure you or somebody on your staff can handle that type of situation and make it run for you. Um, the alternative to going with the dedicated solution is getting into something like Amazon Web Solutions, where you can plug into their systems and it, and it goes, you know, supposedly it's infinite amount. I mean, it's a lot of computing power over there. For instance, Netflix runs off of Amazon Web Services. Lots of big uh, social networking companies use Amazon Web Services stuff. People like Google and Facebook and Apple have gone a whole nother level and they're actually building their own data centers that they then put all their servers into. But that's a whole nother world away. If you're in that world, you shouldn't be watching this, or if you are, I appreciate you humoring me. But I mean, that's, now you're, you're, you're dealing with politics at that point, getting tax breaks. But so my advice is, you know, if you're just getting started, uh, you know, shared, shared hosting can be fine. Uh, you can also look at like GitHub, they have free repositories. Um, I don't know a lot about that stuff, but it's out there. Uh, but if you are a business and you are making any type of money, and I mean as in you're paying your rent and you're, you're making enough money to survive on that business, you need to at least be on a virtual dedicated type of host where you're spending at, you know, anywhere from $50 to $100 a month. I mean, it varies, but you, you need to put in the money for that stuff because you need to have it up all the time. You need to have a situation where if it goes down, you can call support any time of day. You can contact them, get it figured out. They are smart enough to be able to get in there, figure out what the problem is, get it resolved, maybe add some more security solutions to shut stuff down or take care of it for you. Uh, that's invaluable for $50 a month, $80 a month, $200 a month. That's absolutely invaluable service. So you wanna have that. The other thing, just as an end note, pingdom.com. This is a, a web service that will monitor your domain name. They'll ping it every couple of minutes. 
and if it goes down, they'll shoot you an email or a text message and let you know that your site's gone down. You absolutely need that stuff because then you can call your web host and get it figured out, get it back up. So that's what I've got. There's the email, comments are down below. Let me know what you think. Uh, I'm sure I've missed stuff. Like I said, I'm not an IT administrator. I, you know, I, I know enough to, to start up a website and get it running, but if you want me to get into Apache, uh, I've got guys for that. Uh, but either way, tomorrow is Thursday. We're moving on through this. It's getting hot in Phoenix. I'll see you then. Rock on.